My name is Daniel Edgar. I'm a technical project manager at Nginx, focused on application security. I'm going to take you through securing your deployed applications featuring Nginx App Protect. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, what have we done so far? First, Timo and Libby deployed WordPress on Nginx unit for us. James then introduced Nginx Plus for HA and load balancing, including caching for performance. Looking great so far. However, we noticed something strange is going on. It appears that new user accounts are being created in WordPress, and the content has even been defaced at one point. Well, as it turns out, my web application has a vulnerability that hasn't been patched, allowing hackers to exploit it. What can I do about this? We're going to introduce a web application firewall, or WAF for short. So why WAF as a security control? Let's be honest, web application security is difficult, very difficult. And the WAF is the most cost efficient way to address web application security because no code modification is needed. Developing and maintaining comprehensive web security controls can consume a large percentage of the limited budget you may have for developing the actual application and features that users will need to get their useful work done. In a majority of organizations, apps are indeed critical to the business. But at the same time, apps are the number one single point of entry in successful data breaches. So with all that said, how are you going to protect your app? Nginx App Protect is a lightweight web application security solution built around three priorities. App-centric security designed to provide security controls early in the app dev lifecycle in order to prevent downtime and breaches. Second, it's a high performance, lightweight solution designed at its core for modern applications. And third, it's CICD DevOps friendly, and that's gonna enable security and dev teams to market faster at a reduced cost without any surprise delays. But from a technical perspective, what is it? It's a dynamic module that you install on top of Nginx Plus. It's a lightweight software package installed by your Linux distributions package management system. It's cloud and location agnostic, so you can be sure of security efficacy and configuration consistency wherever you choose to deploy it. And finally, it leverages F5's core security technology, so you can be assured of security efficacy in your own environment. So let's deploy Nginx App Protect to provide protection against current and future vulnerabilities without introducing performance or process bottlenecks. Is that complicated? Let's see. We're gonna go into the demo now. So here is the Nginx space WordPress site with the collection of planets. Nothing new here. However, as it stands, this application is not protected. So let's test that out. I'm going to attack the site with a cross-site scripting attack in the URL. Something blatantly obvious, a script attack. The application didn't know how to respond to it. Fortunately, it didn't have a vulnerability in that particular space of the application. Uh, otherwise, uh, we would have an issue. But certainly, it, didn't, it wasn't aware of the kind, kinds of activities that were going on in the uh, application in terms of attack surface. So let's go ahead and look at what it takes to enable Nginx App Protect on this WordPress application. So what you're seeing here is my Visual Studio code, my repository of everything that represents this application to date. We have the WordPress site, we have the database, we have our Nginx Plus instance that we're gonna extend with Nginx App Protect. I've chosen to uh, implement my application security uh, in a Docker container, and I'm using CentOS 7.4. So my Docker file is gonna reference that. I'm gonna use my Nginx certain key, which is necessary to download the components that are needed, install some requisite packages. And then finally, we're gonna install App Protect. And this is important because in order to be considered uh, a, a DevOps friendly tool set or an automation friendly tool set, we need to leverage the platform's package management tools natively rather than introducing our own pr proprietary processes. So we're gonna install App Protect. We're gonna install the latest version of the signatures or attack definitions, which is important. James's module for NJS and Prometheus are still there. We're gonna do some cleanup, run, and, and install it from the entry point. So I've already started up the container earlier with the rest of our application. So we're gonna walk through the rest of the configuration. Here's the root uh, configuration file. And you might notice one thing differently here. Once App Protect is installed, 
we need to use the load module directive to load the app protect module at the high level once and that's all we need to do however we need to then go into the lb nginx conf that james introduced earlier and add some additional settings you might notice that I've introduced uh, SSL, technically TLS protection for this application, as most would want to do, being security conscious. So you're going to see these additional entries here. But right next to that, I have a set of directives uh, related to Nginx App Protect. I'll start with logging first. And I can define logging at a very high level context in the Nginx configuration. Obviously, the master switch to turn logging on, the logging format. The logging format by default is using a name value pairs, a comma delimited format that we're going to use to ingest into Logstash in the Elk stack later in the demo. And you're going to see that. So for this first server context, I have shifted from port 80. I'm redirecting to 443. And at that point, this is where the WordPress UI uh, is, is uh, hosted. And I'm going to introduce some app protect directives at that point. First of all, the enablement flag for this context, and the policy file. And this policy file is something I've created for the UI portion of the web application. I'll go ahead and save this file off, and we can go look at that policy file. You can get started with Nginx App Protect with as little as four parameters in a JSON file. JSON files were chosen because it's a lot easier to manage, to version, to share, to push through your CI/CD pipeline uh, starting with your version control system than other than perhaps other appliance based solutions. So I specify the name of this particular policy. It's space UI. I'm starting with the template and we have one template out of the box. That's a balance of security efficacy with usability. I'm defining my application language. It's uh, encoding type, which is UTF eight in this case, going to start my enforcement mode as blocking. Now I'm pretty confident that I can start my enforcement mode of blocking. Uh, anytime Nginx App Protect sees something that looks like an attack, because I'm in introducing it early on in my development life cycle. So before I even write, write my first line of code, before I extend my application at all, I can have that security policy enabled in my environment. So I know it's going to work exactly the same way during development as it does in production. You can choose, though, if, however, you wanted to introduce this and see how it's going to work with a representative uh, model of traffic in your you know, UAT environment or even production, if you so chose, by putting this in a transparent mode. Nginx App Protect will faithfully report everything that it would block, but it will not actually block any traffic that it sees as, a, as an attack. So that's the options in this policy file. So what we need to do once the policy has been enabled, we have uh, referenced it here. All we need to do is re reload Nginx plus. And this is a non-disruptive operation. It lets uh, existing worker processes bleed off and picks up the new policy with a new configuration, an Nginx plus feature. I'm SSH'd into that Docker container, so I can go ahead and do this directly for, the, for demo purposes. Now, I'm going to go back over to the browser and attempt that attack again. We are met with what we call the default block page. Your requested URL was rejected because Nginx App Protect found it to be a threat. And so it immediately blocked it, preventing the request from going to the backend servers as we saw in our diagram earlier. And it also presents a support ID. And this becomes important if you need to do some correlation between what a user might see with what is going on in the backend. So with that, I want to introduce a dashboard we make available for Nginx App Protect. Uh, it's part of the Elk stack. It's a Kibana dashboard. And in this dashboard, you can look at, um, at various things related to how people are using or misusing your system that's protected with Nginx App Protect. App Protect is sending, uh, in my case, I've configured it to send all traffic, whether it's uh, the outcome is uh, clean, meaning nothing wrong with it, alerted, suspicious, but not quite blocked, or simply blocked based upon attack severity. So you can see this is what I attempted earlier here with that script tag. I'm going to filter based upon that. I have my client IP as the attacker. And I can, from this dashboard, look at the top violators. Since I'm the only one that has access to this, I'm going to see my own IP address. But you're going to see, in addition, which attack signatures or patterns of, uh, of malfeasance were detected by Nginx App Protect. And those roll up into what we call violations. So the particular violations that we're seeing here is an attack signature was detected, an illegal meta character was in, in, uh, 
in the value and there's a violation rating threat detected. So what did we do about it? So this particular attack we're going to explore. I'm going to open it up here to slash and that was that uh, illegal Medicare character and attack signature detected. And inside the log, you're going to find enough information to help you make an educated decision as to why that was, uh, whether or not you want to continue to, to block those kinds of attacks or make some changes to your policy based upon your application's needs. In this particular case, it was pretty obvious that I was doing something I shouldn't have, so I probably won't make any changes to this particular setting. But at this point, I can see what date and time, what port, the name of the particular policy that was involved here, the source IP address, if I didn't mention that already, the location, the uh, raw message that came in from Nginx App Protect, what Nginx App Protect did about it, and why. In this case, they rejected it. So I know this particular user saw that block page because he was up to no good. Here's the source request in there. That was my C script, uh, C script as it was encoded by the browser. More details as to why it was blocked. And most importantly, I have that support ID. So again, I can go search my dashboard to figure out, okay, why was this particular request blocked in case you need to make a tweak to the application, hopefully early on in your uh, development lifecycle. All right, so in addition to that, I wanted to um, highlight the policy name. That policy name is Space UI, which is going to correlate directly back to the policy name we had in this file. This is important because you need to know where to go in your, uh, in your configuration to make changes to the policy, right? So in this particular case, I'm really not crazy about this white block screen. And I realize, you know, probably only uh, actors up to no good are gonna see this, but I may wanna make some changes to it. So fortunately you can. And the place where you customize those is in the policy file itself. So what I've received from my um, uh, branding folks is a version of this page that I'm gonna actually use as my block page and inject that uh, um, uh, a customized message with that correlation ID into it. So let's go ahead and introduce that into the policy. This is a big mess of HTML, which we're not gonna go through specifically, but I'm introducing here the notion of a block page. So when a block occurs, I'm going to use this response content literally this way, right? And I have some simple text in there that says, oops, something strange has happened. And I'm embedding that support ID right in that response page, right? At the end of this, I can also decide what kind of headers I want to come back. I can control that HTTP status code as well as other caching settings when this occurs. So I'm going to go ahead and save this policy file off. And I'm going to reload Nginx. And we're going to attempt the same attack. Make sure my connections have bled off. I'm going to have to open this up in a new browser because that other connection has been persisted. And now you see my custom block page. So again, I'm able to retain the theming. My corporate guidelines for my particular page are kept in, uh, in check, but I have a custom message here, right? In case you experience problems, again, I have that correlation ID for um, being able to look into it later. So earlier I mentioned that Nginx App Protect is built for modern applications. And with that, we need to recognize how users are going to be using modern applications. Many modern applications such as this WordPress site use API calls to the back end. It's a SPA, it's a uh, single page web app. So I'm not gonna be able to uh, react very well when a call is made that returns HTML. So I probably wanna customize that response for the API page. So how do we do that? Well, I'm gonna introduce a uh, variant to that particular policy called an API security policy. And notice some of the differences here. The difference here is that we have our same uh, response page block, but it's much, much smaller. In this case, I want to respond JSON because that's what the browser is expecting in response. I'm responding with a payload that the application is expecting with just some different text, but I'm embedding that support ID in there as well. I'm also responding with a specific header called a 529, so my application can respond to it different. Again, so to, to uh, provide a good user experience while providing security uh, essentially for the application. So to enable that, we need to go back to our load balancing conf file. I already have that here and I'm just going to uncomment that. I'm gonna save that off. I'm gonna reload Nginx. And I'm going to go back to the application and I'm going to toggle through the planets. 
toggling through the planets. And at this point, I want to be able to intercept that API call to the back end, which is a known way uh, to, uh, to target vulnerabilities on a back end application through its API. So to do that, I'm going to introduce the Chrome developer tools. I'm going to scroll it over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the location where they're making that particular call to load the planet data. So next time I cycle through that, I have the ability to uh, intercept it. So I'm going to go backwards on Venus and look at the selected planet that's being loaded. Mars is supposed to be loading through an API call to the back end, that 85 uh, API endpoint on uh, Nginx Plus. And what I'm going to do is at this point, instead of just passing in planet Mars to the API, I'm going to try to overload that. And I'm going to overload that by using a different attack this time called a SQL injection attack, attaching that as a parameter at the back end just to see what happens. Uh, it should be blocked by our new policy. So I'm going to override that variable. And I'm going to send the request on its way. So as you can see, that 529 was returned by that API call. And if I extend this out a little bit, we'll be able to see that actual network call and see what happened. So for that particular API call to Saturn, use that, or sorry, Mars, excuse me, use that SQL injection attack on there. What did we get back? We got back properly formatted JSON markup. So the application can understand it on the response to provide a good user experience that's customized for my application, but still providing protection against uh, uh, violations in the application. So as you can see via our demo, we're able to add application protection to the Nginx Space WordPress site in a matter of minutes in a non-disruptive way. And I, as the developer, can be in control of that security policy at all times. Again, making it so I can deploy my application smoothly and without any unnecessary friction. So that concludes the demo portion. So what did we do? We first showed the Space WordPress app. And then we performed a manual cross-site scripting test against it and saw that there was no protection in place. We then walked through the configuration, specifically the Docker file, which is how I've chosen to deploy Nginx app protect in front of my modern application. We then looked at the additional configuration items where we introduced TLS to provide protection for this application. We introduced a logging policy file. And finally, we took a look at the JSON security policy file for my application. We then performed that same manual cross-site scripting test again and saw that it was being blocked. Then we went to the dashboard view in the Elk stack, specifically Kibana, to look at the violation details, to look at that support ID for correlation purposes and tuning of my Nginx app protect policy. Then we added a custom UI page to represent that blocking activity to match the look and feel of my website. We then went back and performed the same kind of blocking page, but more specific for the API as appropriate for the application. We then tested that that worked using Chrome developer tools by intercepting that API call, which is a very common mode of attacking an application for modern applications. So thank you for joining the Sprint Application Security Demo featuring Nginx App Protect. Have a great day.